Hello, thanks for joining us here on Boulder Bookstore's YouTube channel and happy Independent Bookstore Day. To celebrate this year, uh, we've reached out to some of our favorite local authors uh, and asked them to answer some questions for us on video. And we are so fortunate here in Boulder that we've got tons of great local authors, so we've actually had to split this up into multiple videos. And of course, we've got copies of all these authors' books in the store, and you'll find uh, for each video for the authors featured in that video, you'll find links to their books in the description below. So. Please watch the video and hopefully you enjoy it as much as we have. Thanks! Hi Boulder Bookstore fans, this is Pam Houston um, talking to you actually from Santa Fe, New Mexico today. Um, I'm going to start out with what independent bookstores mean to me because independent bookstores are the reason that I have a writing career. Um, when I wrote Cowboys Are My Weakness so long ago. Uh, the chains at the time, which a lot of you won't even remember these chains, but it was like Walden Books and uh, others, <laughs> they said about Cowboys Are My Weakness, we don't really want this book. It falls somewhere in the gray area between Larry Brown and Danielle Steele. And that may be a dated joke. It wasn't a joke. It, it was what they really said, but Pretty much almost everybody falls between Larry Brown and Danielle Steele. So the chains didn't want to represent me or carry my books. And so it was really the independence exclusively that, um, that made Cowboys Are My Weakness a bestseller and in effect gave me my whole career. But that's not the only reason why I love them so much. I love them because they are one of the major, major stays against fascism and censorship. Um, they are the center of communities where people get to come together and talk and read about things that really matter. Um, they are places to learn and gather and share. Um, they are the center of so many small towns in the West and having the Boulder Bookstore as my kind of home store, which is how I think of it even though I live several hours away, um, has been honestly one of the great joys of my life and I appreciate the support they give me and other wonderful writers of the American West um, and of course national and international writers as well. Um, the strangest thing, I don't know if this is the strangest thing anyone ever said to me in a bookshop but um, <laughs> during the Deep Creek tour there was a guy standing in the back and uh, I was reading from Deep Creek, which is a memoir about finding my ranch in Colorado and a little bit about the really violent and alcoholic childhood, the childhood home that I grew up in and how the ranch was kind of a remedy and a respite and a healing from all of that, my 120 acres in Creed, Colorado. And he raised his hand and I called on him and he said, so let me get this straight. You just talk about all the ways you're fucked up and people give you money? And I said, yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much how it goes. Um, the nicest thing that anyone said or did for me during the pandemic, um, I had a good, good friend in Washington State who owns a house on Vashon Island and I had COVID all the way back before we knew it was COVID. I had COVID in early February of 2020. And my symptoms, my long COVID symptoms, weren't great at super high altitude. And she let me come to her house in Washington um, and get better for about three months. And I lived in her house and I breathed in all the rain and I was very happy at sea level and I saw an acupuncturist every week. and and I got well. And so that was the nicest thing anyone did for me during the pandemic. What do I love most about Colorado and what inspired me to be a writer? Kind of have the same answer. I grew up in New Jersey and um, couldn't wait to get out west. And when I came out west to Colorado as a young person, when I say young, I mean as a 20 year old, um, I just fell completely in love with the landscape, the mountains and the meadows and the rivers, I was a river guide. And 
it was really the landscape of Colorado in particular and the American West, including Utah and New Mexico, that really opened me up and um, gave me inspiration and uh, made me want to start describing it, describing that landscape and uh, put some characters down in there and then things started to happen. So same answer. What I love about Colorado is the landscape and that is what inspired me to be a writer. Hey, I'm Stephen Graham Jones. I write a lot of novels. I live in Boulder, Colorado. You know, I was in fourth grade in my elementary classroom, which was a spillover in the library, and we had all had to check out a book. And there was some sort of reading progress chart. And the book I got completely randomly was Where the Red Fern Grows by Wilson Rawls. It took me three checkout periods to read it all because, you know, distractions. I'm in fourth grade. But I distinctly remember getting to the end of that book where that, um, that axe head is stuck into that tree and there's a rusted lantern hanging on it. It's been there for 20 years. I distinctly remember closing the book, holding my hand there in the classroom and thinking, I can do that. I can end a story. Um, I know how to stick an axe in a tree like that and hang a lantern on it. And so ever since then, I had the secret dream that I would be a writer. And it eventually landed me here. What's the weirdest or funniest thing a fan has ever said to me? You know, I've had a lot of weird stuff come in through the mail, I guess. I think the most unique thing I've had come through the mail is a big old 8x10 glossy photograph of someone's cat it was one of those like cats that are i don't know much about i don't know much about cats this was like the black one and also had like that reddish brown color mixed in like kind of like a doberman color but it seems like there's also some white and i mean i guess as far as cats go it was a nice enough to look at cat but um i didn't know why it was in my mailbox what do i love most about colorado and or boulder Man, I love the trails. I love that I can just head out in so many directions on my mountain bike and be gone, be up in the trees, be out in the rocks, um, see all kinds of animals out there. I, I surprise deer, I surprise bobcats. I'm always scared of seeing a mountain lion. And I like it in the summer when it's so blazing, blazing hot that there's actually some danger. You know, that makes, that makes it more fun to me, especially because I'm generally bleeding after all my wrecks. What's the nicest thing someone has said to me during the pandemic? It's probably my wife. Every time she sees me getting antsy, you know, from being cooped up like we all have been, she'll say, go get yourself a burrito from Chipotle. And um, cause you can do that pretty touch free, you know? And that going to get burritos from Chipotle makes me feel like I'm back in the world, you know? Like I'm moving among people. And the prize at the end of that, is a burrito and that's the best prize of all independent bookstores mean committed booksellers people who believe not just in books but in reading and in readers and that's that that keeps um it keeps the world's like soul alive i think i think stories i think we need stories so desperately but we need people to say oh you want that over there no you want this over here or i just i just i just read this and you're gonna love it um we need that we need people to do that for us i think we need it all through our history really there hasn't always been bookstores but you know these past i don't know century and a half two centuries where bookstores have been bookstores have been more everywhere i think the bookseller has um become so so vital to making us better and keeping us alive Hi, Boulder Bookstore. I'm Kali Fajardo Anstein, the author of Sabrina and Karina, and I'm really excited to help celebrate Independent Bookstore Day. I worked as a bookseller in Denver at an independent bookstore for over 10 years. So independent bookstores are incredibly important to me because not only was it how I met all of my friends, but it's also how I got a lot of my education as a writer. Um, was through my regular customers, through my other staff members, everybody who was giving me recommendations. And then of course, there was the, the stress of performance anxiety with your staff picks. So that really helped me as well. Um, I would say one of the 
funniest or weirdest things that a fan has ever done for me is actually just really sweet things. Um, I received this actually from a fan. They, they did this illustration of Sabrina and Karina and I was just so blown away by this. But uh, my readers, they tend to make imagery and artwork based on Sabrina and Karina. Somebody painted one of my characters recently. Uh, another woman, she did cross stitch and it just goes, oh, I had these girls at Metro State, these students, they did dance interpretation of Sabrina and Karina. And I think they, it just goes on and on. I haven't yet received any songs based on Sabrina and Karina. So I'm really, I'm open to those if anybody wants to send those. Hey everybody, it's David Hesco Wombly Wyden. I am the author of Winter Counts, and I am delighted to chat with you guys today for a little bit. So thank you so much to the Boulder Bookstore for giving me the opportunity to answer a few questions. So let me just jump right into it. I was asked to answer the question, what inspired you to become a writer? And you know, for me, it was really just a deep love of books as a kid. I grew up in Denver in the Swansea Elyria neighborhood. We didn't have a library nearby, but we had a bookmobile, and that was the happiest day of the week for me on Friday when the bookmobile would come and I could just check out a, an armload of books. And so later on, I decided that I was going to take that love of literature and try my own hand at telling Native American stories that I felt hadn't been taught, hadn't been really written about or talked about the right way. So that is in fact why I wrote Winter Counts, and that is just a little introduction to my journey as a writer. So the next question is, what's the weirdest or funniest thing that a fan has ever said to you? Well, this is an easy one for me. Winter Counts was released in August 2020, and obviously we did lots and lots of Zoom events. And I did a live event on Zoom at a bookstore in Oklahoma. And I will tell you that we got Zoom bombed by an elderly gentleman who was operating alone. Uh, I'm gonna keep this rated PG, so I'm gonna leave the rest to your imagination. That was by far the strangest thing that happened to me. Next question, what do you love most about Colorado and Boulder? Well, this again is an easy one. In Boulder, I love the Pearl Street Mall so much. Uh, I remember hanging out there when I was a kid and just having the time of my life. And I went to college at CU in Boulder. So as a college student, I again loved the Pearl Street Mall, and now I take my own kids there, and it's always such a happy time. So I love the Pearl Street Mall, and we always stop in at the Boulder Bookstore. In Denver, I want to say Casa Bonita is one of my favorite places in the area. I think everybody knows this wonderful restaurant that's, you know, part restaurant, part theme park. Uh, it's closed right now, but when it opens again, I hope everybody will join me in visiting Casa Bonita again. And then finally, last question, what do independent bookstores mean to you? Well, independent bookstores are my heart. Um, independent bookstores are a place where readers can go in and check out and browse wonderful new, wonderful new stories and wonderful new books and authors and, and see writers in person and support your community at the same time. So I just can't emphasize enough how much independent bookstores mean to me and how important they are to the community. Independent bookstores have really supported Winter Counts and so I just want to say thank you to all independent bookstores, thank you Boulder Bookstore, and thank you readers. Bye-bye.